some light symptoms. Um, we don't know, uh, you know, obviously we have to wait on the two consecutive negative tests. I, mean, I think beyond that, it's, you know, it's just got to run its course. Um, but he's feeling fine and, you know, it's just going to have to wait and hope for the best. Uh, he's still part of his, this is all part of his ramp up. Um, he's, he's doing a little bit more as in the group setting, still not able to do the, you know, one-on-one -on -one contact or any, anything other than some of the script stuff, shooting, um, concepts with first coaches. It's still relatively limited, but you know, the fact that he can be around and get reps on, for, on, uh, some de defensive concepts some offensive, uh, spacing, I think those are good, good signs. Well, even throughout summer league, you know, I thought, you know, that's, that's kind of why we bought him in. He's got a definitive NBA talent, his ability to shoot the ball. Um, and, and he's played well with the, with the go-go. And I think, you know, anytime we can kind of groom from within and elevate guys, you know, not necessarily reward him, but he's earned it. And, you know, it's, it's, it's good for him. It's good for Isaiah. Um, you know, that's why we bring them and use the go-go the way we do. It's, uh, it's, they're an extension of us. And uh, when we need them, whether it's a rehab tool, um, get guys kind of in a farm system to, to get them up, up to par and up to speed. But bringing them up uh, to join us is just part of the natural progression. How do you build on that? Well, I hope the, uh, you know, our mindset and approach um, will, will be in kind to how we approach that game. Um, we hadn't played well up to that point, and that game was not perfect. But uh, I thought there was a lot of intent to what, everything that we did. It, we were purposeful in our offensive execution defensively much better in the second half but uh, overall I thought it was a collective team win where guys try to play the white the right way and play for each other uh, I think it'll some have a feel for it, some don't. Um, but I think uh, any guy who, who maybe lacks the length, athleticism or size, you have to put yourself ahead of the play. If you're always kind of reacting, you're probably going to be late. And most often than not, you won't win. <laughs> um, but to his credit, he's a competitor. And I, I don't know if that was a personal thing with his history from Utah, but uh, I'm glad he got it. Uh, well, for him or just, uh, I think it does, you know, more so probably for our younger group, you know, and I think they look at him as, you know, he's a pro he's had to earn all the minutes he's, he's gotten, um, you know, you can, you can say there are physical limitations, but he plays beyond that. Uh, anytime he's on the floor, you can feel it, you know, he's out there, he's going to impact it somehow, whether his shots fall or not, he's going to compete, you know, defensively, he's going to try and pick up, change that, that side of the, of the ball. Um, he feels energy, you know, that he's going to you know, be the first to the floor. He's scrappy. Um, and he's going to, he's going to fight. So I think it's, it's one thing you notice when he's, when he's out there. No, no. It looks great. Um, he's moving well. Um, I, I like the fact that he's vocal. Uh, I think he's still trying to figure it out and learn what, what we're trying to do, but um, he's picking up our terminology and, he, and he's vocal. For I think for bigs, that's a huge, huge step. You know, and I think if, if you've ever been in that situation, more often than not, you're seeing everyone in front of you. So you can be kind of the quarterback, especially defensively. Uh, telling guys where to go, making those, those calls early, I think really helps us. And with this uh, unexpected Well, just tightening up some of the things we've seen as far as slippage, um, you know, and that's been in the pick and roll. A lot of it's been on the defensive end, but even on the offensive end, just, uh, you know, our timing, our setups, our screening, um, the two man, three man relationships, moving and cutting, you know, off the ball, creating space. Uh, we've done a lot of shooting. 
So you hope, hope that, you know, putting all those things together, it translates into, you know, better offensive rhythm, better flow, um, better synergy on the defensive end. Uh, uh, Rui will go with us to uh, New York. I'm still, I'm still waiting on TV. I think it's just another step, you know, um, you know, I think he's, he's ready to take that next step and, you know, hopefully, um, you know, we can put him in uniforms, you know, and I, I'm not saying he's going to play, but just one more step. I think it's important for him to take and he's, he's willing to take it. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Just two players, <laughs> two guys on a roster. I mean, uh, no, I mean, two roster players. <laughs> they weren't, they weren't PD coaches. They weren't bench coaches. They were, they were players. Um, regarding uh, PD, learning to play quarterback, you know, is, is that kind of a similar challenge for a really or, or you know, uh, it's a challenge for everybody. Uh, you want everyone to be up to speed, but in particular, your fives, you know, and the way we play our, our fours and even defensively, you know, a lot of teams don't play two traditional bigs. We'll see it a little bit tomorrow. We may see three traditional bigs, <laughs> but um, because of that, the spatial dynamic is different. And I think it's that communication piece is very important, but I think it's ultra important for your fives because uh, they're normally down the floor. And once again, they're going to see everything in front. Um, so talking guys through situations, uh, communicating coverages early, I think really uh, it impacts the game. You know, you, very few uh, young players had that. So it's a good sign to see that he's picked it up and he's willing to do it. I think you guys are facing six Eastern Conference teams in a row. Um, is there anything in particular that's been valuable against the East or is it always a team by team? I think in general team by team, you know, uh, the better part is that, you know, most of those games are home. I mean, obviously, we have a few on the road to finish the month. But once we get into January, we're home heavy. So uh, I'm hoping that tips in our favor. Just to clarify, uh, when it comes to Rui, tonight, you know, you're in the uniform in those first three games. It looks like that's kind of the step that you're talking about. Yeah. You wouldn't play it until it's right now. Yes. Okay. Chris? Hey, Wes, some of the disadvantages because of COVID is guys aren't able to really go out to dinner and kind of just spend some time together on the road. Have you noticed that in these last couple of road trips where it just seems like guys kind of just show up, you go through your game plan and play? Yeah, it's tough. I mean, we've kind of been through this for the better part of two and a half years. I mean, I know we had a thing started to open and, and look you know, promising, but um, it's, it's not a lot of fun. You know, whether it's, you know, grab and go meals at the hotel, it's, uh, you know, limited interaction with family and friends. Even if you're allowed to go, you're still tentative to do so uh, just out of abundance of caution. Um, so you kind of feel confined. And, uh, you know, at, at, on some level, it's gotten old, but it, it is what it is. And we have to be mindful of, you know, where we are and, and why it's so important that we stay disciplined and vigilant with this. Um, it's affecting a lot of teams and obviously we, we've been affected as well. Um, hopefully not to the same extent, but you know, you, you always have to be careful. I want to ask you really quick about Spencer and Brad and kind of not forcing chemistry and kind of having them figure it out. There's really no quantitative date of when that happens. I understand that though, but does it hurt when he doesn't play kind of like the second night of back to backs? Does that impact where these two guys in terms of getting on the same page? Uh, that's a, you know, it may, obviously it's a, there's a handful of games. Um, anytime those two can be on the floor, you, they get more reps and more minutes together. I think it helps. I can't pinpoint, you know, and say, well, those, whatever, six, six or seven games he's missed, um, you know, dramatically change that. But, you know, I think it, it is important. The more reps in practice, the more reps in, in a game, uh, the better. I think, I think the, the sooner those guys can, can kind of meld, not just the two of them, but, you know, that whole starting unit. I think it does take time. Um, and hopefully we can help expedite that. One more quick question. It just came out that another Knicks player has just uh, entered the health and safety protocol. Will you guys kind of know before you get on the plane? Or do you think that there will be something before you guys even make get up to New York if this game is even possible? Uh, I mean, I hope so. But, you know, I think it was a Chicago game, you know, that just got canceled as well. 
they were already, you know, they've already, you know, we're in, in that city. So you, you just have to plan accordingly and we'll know when we know, you know these things are fluid. That's all we can do is kind of just go until uh, we're told not to. Wes, thanks. Appreciate it. Neil. Hey coach, just to confirm Casey, you don't expect Casey to P Casey P to travel with you guys, right? No, we do not. And so I guess you guys just essentially follow league direction for anything, or do you guys ever have input from your own medical team of, okay, maybe this guy should be held out of practice because he was in somewhat close contact with this person? No, I mean, the medical side is always in play, but we'll follow the league's protocol. Um, obviously, any local, you know, or national guidelines, it's, it's really all we can do. And I guess what was the you know main thing in practice today that maybe was different than the previous couple times you guys have gotten on the court? Uh, we did a lot of breakdown stuff today, you know, just trying to clean up some of our uh, pick and roll, um, you know, two v two, the three, three on three, just kind of the nuanced things we've seen. You know, that slippage. You know, yesterday we got after it. We did a lot of competitive things. Today was more of a teaching day. Thanks, Coach. Christos. Hello, coach. Hope you're doing well. Speaking on, uh, about Danny Avdia and his game, how contagious is his energy on, on the floor in the team uh, so far in the season? I think it's been, his, his energy is good. I mean, he's always a very positive guy. Um, he's upbeat. I think he, he wants to, uh, just as much as he wants to compete, he's also a people pleaser. So <laughs> he, he needs that affirmation. And I think it's, it's great that, you know, he, he plays that way, plays free. Uh, he's excited about playing and being on the floor, uh, kind of, you know, doing things for his teammates. Um, and I think that's it's, it's a great thing for a young player because it's not always going to go your way. But, you know, how do you approach it? You know, how do you maintain um, that even mentality where, you know, all right, I'm not going to get too high or get too low. Uh, let me just do my job and try to continue to play the right way. Uh, I think th thus far he's done that. Uh, we've seen him. We've seen him make big plays and big moments on both sides of the ball. And I think it's uh it's a good sign for him, and it's a, it's a next step in his development, you know, to continue to do that and hopefully sustain it. And uh, speaking about uh, Spencer, how what did you see about his reaction through the adversities and during the practices? How how satisfied you are about uh, the way that he reacts I'm during sorry. the practices? Can you repeat that? I, I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Speaking about uh, Spencer, Spencer Dinwiddie, what did you see about on his way that uh, he reacts through the adversities uh, this season, especially du during the practices. Well, how how satisfied you are about the way that he he reacts so so far? Well, you know, to Spencer's credit, I mean, he's seen a lot of adversity. I mean, I understand the, the severity of the knee injury he had uh, and all the rehab, um, the buildup to, to get him back to where he is right now. So adversity isn't something new. Um, I think it's, you know, it's who he is. I mean, we've seen him recover and be able to uh, get back to playing in a short span, um, considering the injury that he sustained. So uh, I think just like with, with anything, you know, you got to work through it. But um, I like the way he's approached it, you know, and he hasn't necessarily always seen the, the payoff, but his approach has, made, has remained steady. And I think that's important. Uh, you, you, sometimes you just got to go through it, gut it out. Um, and we got to help him. But it's not that he hasn't, you know, seen adversity, doesn't know how to handle it. You know, I, I think he's, he's done that very well. Thank you very much, Coach. Heaney. Hey, Coach. Um, quick question about Denny. Um, we've seen him in the last uh, previous games that he's uh, he scored in double digits and he's starting to get into rhythm in the, on the offensive end. And I wanted to know, uh, what is your uh, impression about his game and about his development on both ends on, of the floor? Well, I think it's been, uh, you know, a steady progression of growth uh, for him. You know, I thought we saw the defensive side early where he, you know, had tremendous, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, um, you know, defense against high-quality high players. Um, I mean, I think the offense has taken a little longer to get going, but he's always been capable. Uh, you know, putting him and moving him around in different situations, using him as a ball handler, uh, second side, you know, pick and rolls have been good for him. Uh, but I think, too, when once plays break down, 
you know, he's just able to read it where, you know, the ball finds you, just be decisive, put it down and attack. You know, if you're open, you shoot it. If, if not, get off of it. Um, and I think that's just kind of been our approach and, and even some of the things we drill. It's just making those quick decisions. Uh, in doing that, I think that's helped him. Uh, for you as a coach, you wanted to see him maybe more decisive or more um, impactful on the offensive end? Yeah, just more decisive. Um, and I think just, you know, not, not saying you're hunting shots, but just be aggressive, you know, where I think you're smart enough to read, you know, the situation and uh, just take advantage of what the defense gives you. Um, feels good. You know, we didn't have the chance this year to practice a lot, so um, be able to um, really sell things up, understand what we want to do, fix the things we didn't have time to, because some games you lose and it's a back-to-back, -back. except film, you don't really have time to walk on the court and, and uh, correct those mistakes. So I think it's a good little boost for the, for the remaining of the season. Uh, hopefully we're going to ha have some uh, more days like we can practice more. So um, it, it, it went through good. So. How was playing one-on-one with Coach? <laughs> uh, playing one-on-one? -on -one? I mean, me and Kuz trying to start a routine of playing one-on-one -on -one against each other. First of all, because we, um, we're probably the same height, same size. So, you know, it's, it's a good matchup for us. And um, we just like to work with each other, like shooting, like we, we, we're both really competitive. So um, we just make each other better by guarding each other, by playing one-on-one, uh, -on -one, by doing shooting drills. We, uh, we just make each other uh, better and yeah, we build this relationship. So Wes was um, really like, he, he's always positive. Like even though we were in a slump and, and, and before we had a big uh, win against Utah, he, um, you can see like, um, we're all just a little bit down, but Wes always like um, shines positive positivity kind of like he always on the, his mind is always there. And he always uh, talking to us about like, okay, next game, how we can get better. He, he done a great job uh, doing that. Um, so I think he just stayed positive. You know, it's a slump. It happens during the season and um, just moved on. We, uh, we uh, showed character, I think. Um, we show what we made of. We, we know we have the talent. We just needed a couple of pieces to come along and uh, we can be, uh, beat some uh, really good teams. You know, the Western Conference ain't easy. The, this West Coast trip wasn't easy. Um, but I think that game against Utah showed, showed some character from us. And I'm hoping we're going to just um, fly from there and be good and be better. And um, that's it. Uh, this season, I noticed you're taking uh, a little bit fewer threes, but you're making more of them. Um, um, that's in a, uh, like an intentional approach to your shot selection to like uh, take different threes this year or take different types of shots in general. I'm trying to create more for my teammates because um, I don't know. It's just me being more aggressive, getting into the pain, and like creating for others. And um, I don't know. I don't really think about it. Like even that I had like bad shooting uh, start of the season. I didn't really think that I'm. I need to stop shooting threes or I'm a bad three point shooter. I know I'm inconsistent right now. I'm trying to get really consistent in being a, a three point shooter. I'm aware of it, but I'm never, I was never like scared of my shot or, or scared, scared to miss. So, you know. In, in that regard, you kind of mentioned this the other night. What's it like seeing, you know, your percentage has across the board have gone up this year? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you can say that. I think it's a hard work in a confidence combination. I think me being more confident, being, me being more mature, knowing my body better, knowing uh, what spots uh, to shoot from, uh, where, where I shoot better. And um, just overall, just, yeah, trusting my shot, trusting my work ethic and, um, you know, not, not overthinking too much. Listen, it's 
it's a bummer. I mean, I mean, to get sick or to get positive and be away for the team and quarantine, it's, it's not fun. I did it last year and um, it wasn't fun, but um, that's the world we live today. So we just need to keep being safe, keep wearing our masks. I know it's 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 hard because we're playing basketball and we, we're high fiving all the time and we're we're playing other teams and we just need to watch ourselves more. But for the guys who are positive in the league, just I hope you guys healthy. Um, and that's it. Just want to get we want to see everybody healthy and getting back to business. So. What will be the key to slowing down Julius Randle and some of the other next big players? Just playing defense. I mean, being aggressive. Julius is a good player. He's playing aggressive. He he knows how to score. So, I mean, just staying in front. I mean, nothing that nothing that I played on other players or we played on a player is going to change. We're going to, um, how you say, fix our defense or, or um, navigate it towards, like, what's better to guard them. But at the end of the day, you know, we just need to step up and show character and stop and make stops. That's it. Russ? Last year, really pushed you, gave you a lot of advice in game as well. Who's been that guy for you this year? I know Trez talks a lot, and I know he's also been slow with Coop. Who's been that guy for you this year? Uh, we have a lot of good veterans this year and a lot of smart people and players that won some championships too. So um, I can say it's kind of a combination. Like, it's not like sort of a mentor, but if they're going to see him doing something wrong or – something that I don't understand and I ask, they always have the right answers. They always, they're always like cool with like as many questions as I ask them, they answer, like they're very patient and I respect it, but there's no somebody specific. Neil? Hey, Denny, you've talked a lot about, you know, the trust that coaches and your teammates kind of show you and that, how that helps your confidence. Can you think of an example or describe, you know, how they convey that to you? Can you repeat the question? So you said a lot about how the coaching staff and your teammates trust you, you know, more and more this season. How do they kind of show you that trust? Um. I, I don't like I'm just I don't I feel like I'm playing like the same I think they trusted me from the beginning of the year um, maybe me showing more confidence me like being more consistent in the things I do but other than that like you know I can't really tell when they um, feel more confidence with me or like you know so I guess for between last season and obviously that was an adjustment in and of itself to this season, can you feel that more? Obviously also different coaching staff and teammates, but can you feel that, yes, they rely on you and, you know, have every bit of confidence in you this season? I mean, I mean, I'm growing. So I think every year it's going to be um, better and better and like I'm being more mature and I'm going to be like more experienced and, and yeah, people are going to, people are eventually going to come to me and ask, Hey, Benny, how, you do that, how we do that. And I'm going to give advices to the younger generation. So, I mean, it's just a matter of time, but we're running way, way far right now. So I'm just focusing on right now. And I'm on a good, on, I'm on a good path and a team in a good path. So I just want to continue that. Thanks, Danny. Thank you. Christos. Hello, Danny. Hope you're doing well. For you, how important is it to bring the, 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 the right energy to have the, the right mindset on the on both ends of the floor, but especially on, on the defensive end? Just prepare myself for the, for the game, offensively, defensively, showing, um, watching film, um, talking with the coaches. The coaching staff doing a great job of uh, telling us where to move, how to move, and uh, how to defend. And I'm just going with the I'm trusting the system. And speaking about uh, your offensive, uh, your offensive effort, do you see the kind of progress uh, this season? Hundred percent. I think uh, progress every day. So I just see progress every day. I'm hoping that in four or five, as, as fast as I can, like maximize my potential and be better and better every day until, I, like, until I basically retire. Hopefully, I'm gonna just learn 
new things every day, getting better every day, and um, be a more complete, complete player. So 